watching this tournament. There's a great look at uh, Diamond Johnson, who is such a great player when she's healthy. We saw her during the regular season, Steph, and just a shadow of her former self because of that right foot. Yeah, she really was. She was hindered. She couldn't move. She couldn't elevate. And she is such a great scorer going to the rim and just did not have it in her. And Westmore deciding to shut her down to get her ready for postseason. They plan on having her for the NCAA tournament where they are one of nine ACC teams that Charlie Cream has in the field right now more than any other conference in the U.S. And NC State throws the ball away. They come in nine and nine on the season. Same with Syracuse, but because State won head to head, they are the higher seed, albeit slightly an eight versus a nine. Perkins, Kennedy Perkins, a true freshman from Illinois, number one in orange. What other color would they wear? And Syracuse on the board first. Dariana Lewis, first year at Syracuse after three years at Alabama A&M. She was an HBCU All-American a couple of times. NC State, a team that has kind of been struggling to find itself this year. A lot of new faces and new roles. James with the miss. Perkins taking it all the way for her first bucket, only averages about three points per game. Well, this is a Syracuse team who, who can score the basketball. I mean, they can score in bunches. They're third in the league in, in scoring. They're first in the league in offensive rebounds. So having multiple possessions is part of their game. Playing this matchup zone defensively, really making it difficult. You see NC State just throwing it all over the floor. And a couple of turnovers early for the Wolfpack. Johnson out of the lineup, and they've had some up and ups and downs this season with their different lineups that Westmore has been forced to use. They dropped out of the top 25 in late January for the first time since January of 2018. It is 6-0 Syracuse now. After Fair hit her first basket, averaging 20 points a game, that is second in the league behind Tania Latson. Jada Boyd able to get inside for her first basket. State down now 6-2. Perkins running the show. Syracuse with a lot of new faces themselves, a lot of transfers, not just from Buffalo. They're unable to chase it down. It's a Syracuse program that was really decimated. A lot of players left. Um, Coach Jack coming back to her alma mater, taking over, bringing in a lot of new players, putting them together rather quickly, but bringing over a little bit of continuity with players who came from her from, with, from Buffalo, understanding what it is that she wants. And this is a team who has been competitive night in and night out, and we've seen them continue to get better as the season progressed. And it's a program that has had to rebuild after a couple of chaotic years. River Baldwin gets a good look. Joining this program after three years at Florida State. Florida State upset earlier today. It's six to four Syracuse early on in this game. Rice looking inside to Strong, who took a couple of steps. Second turnover. My Forsberg, Denise Brooks, and Jeffrey Smith, a good veteran crew on hand today in Greensboro. Old school, shooting the scoreboard because our bug is down. That is the scoreboard that you usually see all the time in games. It's hard to imagine life without one. But it sure is. But we're living that right now. We get used to seeing it. Some of us are old enough to remember when the bugs weren't around. There <laughs> is a foul on Jada Boyd. That has to be you, right? That you're uh, I, it would probably Asia. most definitely be me. Oh, okay. Yes. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Asia Strong called for the foul. Jada Boyd being aggressive early. Jada Boyd, two shots. Jada Boyd, a 
Coe's sixth player of the year in the ACC a year ago. Her scoring down just a couple of points from last year. But they missed only four starters left, and they were darn good starters, to say the least. Kinane, Kayla Jones, a whole bunch of... Raina Perez. Yes. Kai Crutchfield. And Raina Perez, who helped win this tournament last yes. year with that last second shot. Yeah, and, and, and what they lost, not just from a production standpoint, but a leadership standpoint, a consistency standpoint, on knowing what you're going to get night in and night out. And this has been an NC State team who has been anything but consistent throughout this season. They were picked third in the ACC behind Louisville and Virginia Tech. And all, all the way down to the eighth seed. Trying times for Coach Westmore. Fair, lost it. I like what NC State's doing, not allowing DeAsia Fair to come off the on-ball screen. They're icing her or keeping her from using the screen. You've got to make sure that you're really tight, though, because she can one dribble pull up if you force her to not use it. There she is. Number two is Fair. Keep your eyes on her. They have Rivers guarding her. Rivers on the... Picked as the sixth player of the year in the ACC this year. Now Syracuse has a player down in Georgia Woolley. And Georgia Woolley torched NC State for 23 points when they played in the regular season. And she's saying she's okay, but they've subbed in for her, so she has to come out. Woolley, a sophomore from Australia, who also came over from Buffalo with Coach Jack. Rivers inside the ball, quickly draws attention. Brown Turner passed up the long jumper. Baldwin could not save it, so the ball goes over to Syracuse. I felt like that was a three that Jakea Brown Turner could take. It was in rhythm, the ball had gone inside and then to the backside against the zone. Jakea Brown Turner is the only starter coming back from last season. Senior from Oxon Hill, Maryland. And Rivers frustrated with herself for committing her first foul. This matchup with Sanaya Rivers on DeAsia Fair, her length, her, her athleticism, that is to her advantage. So being disciplined, not getting in foul trouble, there certainly is a lack of depth for the Wolf Pack is gonna be important. And now you see they change the matchup and Madison Hayes gets the call. Syracuse leading here six to five with about five minutes to go in the first quarter. Fair elevates, left it short. JVT, Shakia Brown Turner picks it up. Rivers, they have numbers, three on two. Kick it over to Maddie Hayes. Brown Turner gives him a second chance. Boyd saved it. Good ball moving here for State. And it results in Brown Turner's bucket. Great ball movement. Terrific extra pass. Unselfishness getting great shots. 8-6 NC State now on top. Four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Fair. Got a good screen, room to get it off, but the shot would not go down. DeAsia with two points so far. Rivers, huge pickup for Westmore in the transfer portal. And the national championship at South Carolina. Shot clock at six. Rivers just absolutely hounded by Fair. Here's a two on one the other way with Hyman. Unselfish play by Fair. Hyman gets it home. De'Asia Fair is second in the league in steals. She's got those quick hands. Ties the game up at eight. And they are going for the steals. Baldwin, put her home. That was a nice catch by River Baldwin. I like how aggressive Jada Boyd has been early in this ball game. Getting the ball at the high post, looking to attack. Rivers cradles the basketball with her team up two.
Baldwin left open, decided not to put up a shot. Instead, Boyd found her. Remember Baldwin off to a terrific start with six. And those two are really working well together. Getting the ball at the high post, looking that high low, getting the ball in the short corner, and looking at the post dive. And he stayed up 12 to eight, just under three minutes to go in the first. Hyman aggressive to the hoop. Tisha Hyman, the only returning starter on this Syracuse team. And she has been coming off the bench for Coach Jack. Contact inside, drawn nicely by Jada Boyd. We'll take a timeout. NC State up two. When we come back, we'll have a very special guest. Fine, this is a very big game for Syracuse. And Coach Leggett Jack trying to get them back into the NCAA tournament more securely in the field that they uh, certainly will get a win today. And let's take a look at their resume. The net rank has them at 53. Right now, Charlie has them projected as last four in as a number 12 seed. But if they can beat State today, certainly that would help. Number 68 teams get in for the women like the men. River ball went off to a great start with six points and give her an assist. NC State's doing a really good job of working that high-low action. You mentioned it, River Baldwin, when giving this team the lift, there's really not the size on the interior to defend a player like Baldwin. And Asia Strong at 6-2, who is the closest. Baldwin getting more playing time so far than Camille Hobby, who started the game. Zaya James has just picked up her first foul for NC State. Hyman, short, but hunted down her own rebound. Inside two minutes to go. Hyman, guarded out there by James, still got a shot off, and now James comes up with the rebound. James has had a couple of really good games for State, particularly late, but gave that away. Good to see Woolley back on the floor. She got nicked up a little bit earlier in the game. Missed their last game against Pitt because she was in concussion protocol. They're back here playing today. This is the tough thing for NC State. Diamond Johnson's injury takes away your primary ball handler. Tanaya Rivers on the bench right now is the secondary ball handler. So Isaiah James has had to go from being that spark off the bench on the wing to being a lead guard in this system. Brown Turner with the miss. Great. Effort by Madison Hayes to, go, to get the rebound, and she was fouled. I mean, again, just a lax pass by James. Georgia Woolley able to get in that passing lane, get an easy two. You can't just assume that you're going to be able to make that ball reversal. You got to be sure. And again, you, you think about this team and, and Reyna Perez, that, that lead guard as River Baldwin gets another two a year ago. Diamond Johnson was that spark off the bench. And, and the primary ball handler. But NC State, I feel like, has had to reinvent themselves multiple times this year. Miss Johnson was the sixth player of the year last year. Coach Westmore likening her to like the microwave coming off the bench back in the day for the Pistons. Is that Biddy Johnson? Yes. Yes, it was. That was good. I'm proud of that's, you. That's all I got for the NBA for you. And that was a long time ago. Brown Turner tried to get it in to Mimi Collins, and she lost it out of bounds. Mimi Collins playing at her third school. Started out at Tennessee, played a couple of years at Maryland. She's from that state, and now at NC State. I think Westmore talked about it. He's used to having players for four years, developing them, and with the transfer portal, things have really changed. Trying to get people acclimated in a, a very short period of time. Shot clock and game clock. No shot clock, game clock dying. Fair. Yes. Off the back rim. And NC State takes a five-point lead after the first quarter of play in this second. 
And let's take a look at what our stars are doing so far in this tournament. Jewel Spear, fantastic. Shut out in the first half today, then went crazy in the second half. Wake with a big come from behind win over Florida State. Hannah Hank, a career high against Pitt. Dontavia Wagner, not just playing, she's dealing with some injuries, but 16 points off the bench and a win against Georgia Tech yesterday. And a steal by Madison Hayes. Mississippi State transfer, biggest lead of the game, seven points for the Pack. 8-9 matchup in the ACC. Winner gets top-seeded Notre Dame tomorrow. Good question mark for Notre Dame, the status of Olivia Miles. Heard in the season closer against Louisville. Well, what an effort by Notre Dame and the Irish to be able to continue to challenge and win that ball game. Sonia Citron is outstanding. KK Bransford is Georgia Woolley knocks down the three. Georgia Woolley, who was the freshman of the year in the MAC last year with Buffalo, knocks down her first three of the game. River Baldwin just backs in to get her 10th point. There's just nobody that can check River Baldwin down low. She does a good job of getting deep position. She's efficient when she gets the ball. If you're the Wolfpack, you want to keep feeding her. Just averaging five and a half points per game already into double digits. Wow, Fair went right in to Baldwin and it's a blocking call. Syracuse is a team that averages six threes a game, and Georgia Woolley knocks down a long, high arcing three. And then River Baldwin just going to work inside. There is no answer for her. The foul on Baldwin sends Fair to the line. She is an 82% shooter, one of the best in the conference. career at Buffalo translating very well into Syracuse yeah, I mean you look at those numbers and she really is just able to score in bunches listed at 5-5 Amy Collins back rims it Woolley comes up with it here's Perkins the freshman Travel and Denise Brooks got it. Fifth turnover now for the Orange. <laughs> Collins looking for Baldwin and then lost the ball. Fair. Over James. And Woolley picked it up. Rebound taken down by Collins. Inside ball, but another good catch. And then a tie up. But the possession arrow stays with NC State. So River Baldwin, as you mentioned, has really made a huge impact coming off the bench for Camille Hobby. Five of five from the floor for Baldwin. Played at a very small high school in Alabama. Some growing pains initially at Florida State and now contributing at NC State. Tyra Wood, the Rebound. You know, Wilson settling things down. Shot clock. 
Winding down, they're not gonna get a shot off. 6 turnover, and there is a look at Diamond Johnson, who is not going to play in the ACC tournament. And with and without her, you see the points per game are way down. Very, very different team. When, when she's on, and even when she's on there, I mean, those, those numbers are skewed because even when Diamond played a lot this year, great drive by Rivers, she wasn't herself. And we saw, you know, a few games where she would go like one for eight, one for nine from the floor and just really struggle. When you see the, the assist down and the turnovers up, and when you take away another ball handler on the floor, somebody who's used to running the offense, who used to, who's used to getting the ball moving, and now that sole responsibility lies with Sanaya Rivers, it, it is an adjustment, and it is tough. And Diamond Johnson was also a playmaker. She got to the rim, she got other players the ball, and Madison Hayes, big time three in transition. NC State fans getting engaged here as their team up by nine. Greensboro about an hour or so away from the triangle area. Hyman. That's a good job by Wood to follow. Wood another transfer coming over to Syracuse, her first basket. And Syracuse leads the league in offensive rebounds, 14 and a half a ball game. Important to finish the possession if you're the Wolfpack, but great hustle play. Hi Wilson getting over to Fair who backs up. Another offensive board for the Orange. And looks back to her coach to get some advice. We'll pull up Jay. Now James, two on one with Hayes. Try to get it back to her. Terrific hustle by Fair and the rest of her teammates. They messed up that break and scored on the other end. Ariana Lewis, her second basket. I like it when Syracuse pushes in transition. They're really good when they can put some pressure on the defense. NC State's doing a good job in the half court, quarter court of defending that two-man game. They can get out, open it up a little bit in transition. I'll be back in the game to give Baldwin a break. Probably backed up Lisa Kunain for the first part of her career. James got a hand on the ball. Too much for Rivers. Yep, couldn't catch up. Now a timeout on the floor with State up five. Madison Hayes giving her team a lift off the bench. She's got five early in this ball game. The three-point shot in transition. I think she's liking that, huh? For a Coliseum, we're in our second game of the day between Syracuse and NC State. Wolfpack with a five-point lead. And despite Syracuse being down at this point, you have to argue that they're one of the hottest teams coming into this tournament. They won their last two regular season games or in hopes to get into the NCAA tournament. But Coach Leggett Jack was telling her team pregame, no one in this tournament has been through more than what you have been through in this season, alluding to their revamp revamping of their roster. They had seven players that came in that are new faces. Four players actually returned. And she said, I challenged every single mid-major player to be their absolute best in the ACC. She said, we only won four games last year in league play. They come in with nine. She was harder on them because she wanted to make sure this was the group that she can go out and compete with every night. As Deasia Fair gets a three to go, and it really is. Uh, re remarkable, all the new faces, but we're seeing this more and more in not just women's basketball because of the transfer portal, but Leggett Jack really had to retool this club. As Angel mentioned, they won four league games, only won 11 overall last year. Some uh, rough bumps in the road as Camille Hobby gets her first basket. And she has brought in you know, kids from Buffalo. She's brought in a handful with her from Buffalo. Kyra Wood went to Temple. And, and some of these mid-major kids come in almost with a little chip on their shoulder, right? Coming in, trying to prove themselves by, by these Power Five schools, so-called, that 
that overlook them. Absolutely, you come in, you want, you do, you want to prove that you belong, and this is a program and a team that has players who have done that. And you get Jack doing such a fine job at Buffalo. Coming back to her alma mater. Gotta be special coming back to coach you go, your alma mater. Played with Vera Jones, right? We played with Vera Jones, that's right. One of our friends and colleagues. NC State needs to continue to pound it inside. They have the advantage. Continue to get touches down low. Gone away from that a little bit with Baldwin on the bench. Ball goes back over to Syracuse. There's River off to a fantastic start. 10 points. He's hit all five of her shots. Jada Boy ties up the sneakers. Again, the winner of this game gets Notre Dame tomorrow. Quarterfinal action starts tomorrow with the top four seeds who get the luxury of a double bye before they play in the tournament. Wake Forest will be playing in its third game in as many days when they play Louisville in our first game tomorrow at 11 Eastern. Drive, that was good defense by Brown Turner. Oh, give it to her. Camille oh. Harvey showed both numbers. She was really working for position. Missed opportunity. He has to work a whole lot harder to hang on to it. The ball was touched, so it was not a travel. Brown Turner, good work to get the O board. Javi finishes. Javi has four, so between Javi and Rivers, that's 14 of their 30 points. Well, look, they've got an advantage inside. I don't think that Syracuse has anybody who can match up one-on-one. -on -one with either one of those players. You just gotta continue to give them a look and they have to continue to make good decisions. When to take the move, when to kick it back out. Boyd muscles her way in, looks for the foul, doesn't get it. Syracuse hasn't scored in almost three minutes. That's over, thanks to Hyman. Richard Jr. guard averaged 16 points last year, down to about 10 and a half points coming off the bench now for the Orange. Three seconds difference between the two clocks. Rivers is gonna milk it as much as she can. Hyman doing a good job of keeping her away from the basket, but then Rivers decides just to Attack the rim and gets fouled. Coming up, we will head over to our left with our sideline, with our uh, studio crew getting ready. We see Kelly Gramlich took a sip of beverage to get herself hydrated, ready to go. Muffet McGraw, got Kelsey Riggs over there. They're working all. Weekend long, going back to a nice plush hotel, chilling. I think Kelly was given the three point sign, yeah. wasn't Kelly, she? Kelly always wants a three. Absolutely. There's Kelly. Of course, yes. Kelly, Why Kelly not? in a plus one over there, <laughs> working for us. Wilson, Sanaya Wilson picked up her second foul. And the other Sanaya Rivers delivered at the free throw line. Orange got a hurry. Hyman. Oh, most. NC State takes a 32 to 26 lead into the locker room led by River Baldwin's 10 points. Hayes and Madison Hayes making the extra pass to get the best shot on the floor. That is textbook execution against the 2-3 zone. Winner gets top seed Notre Dame tomorrow. You take a look at the numbers. NC State shooting well, but Wes more lamenting the turnovers, the nine turnovers <laughs> turning into 13 Syracuse points. Head. That's the comment of the, of the weekend so far. Re people meeting hard hats because they're throwing the ball all over the gym. But yeah, River Baldwin, perfect. Coming off the bench, she does not start the second half. Came in for Camille Javi, JBT with the miss. Lewis 
goes up to get the rebound. Second time these two teams have played. NC State won by two when they played in Syracuse during the regular season. And what has been a very interesting and unpredictable ACC season. Rice picks up her dribble, has to go to Woolley. Everybody says she walked except the ones that matter. Let's go over to Angel Gray. As far as the adjustments for Coach Leggett, Leggett Jack, she was telling me that the advantage for NC State at this point, 20 to 12 in the paint, she's not really worried about that. She said she was more concerned coming into this game, giving up threes. They only gave up two threes in the first half. And she also challenged her team to finish under contact. She was saying that they weren't being as tough as they can be throughout this ball game. The message, this is March, leave it all on the floor. Thank you, Angel. And right away we saw Camille Hobby getting two more points in the paint. Hobby and Rivers combining to hurt Syracuse down low so far in this game. Really one of the Buffalo transfers who came over with their head coach gets the basket and a chance for an old fashioned three point play. Georgia Woolley looking to attack in this third quarter. Nice little hesitation. Strong finish with the contact. Georgia Woolley, you mentioned it, was the rookie of the year a year ago for Buffalo in the MAC conference. Came over with Coach Leggett Jack. And, you know, when you have players who, who transfer with you, you have a little bit of a foundation. They understand the system, they understand expectations, they can be leaders even though they're in a new program. The adjustment period a little less. And they're so familiar with each other, and she had a handful of players come over with her, including Fair and Woolley, her two highest scorers on that team at Buffalo, did such a wonderful job at Buffalo, and now back at her alma mater. First woman to have her jersey retired in women's basketball history at Syracuse. Lewis called for the reach in. Her first year at Syracuse. Great student athlete. All-American, academic All-American. Ariana Lewis. Transfer herself. Oh, that looked like a chance he passed into Boyd. Somehow it got through. This formula is really working for NC State to keep getting the ball inside. They're doing a great job attacking the seam of the zone, the diagonal. You mentioned it. They saw the angle. Jada Boyd does a good job of meeting the pass, coming to it, getting an opportunity at the foul line. Jada Boyd on the line for State. Six different NC State players with an assist. I mean, it's outstanding. Ten assists on 14 made field goals. Doing a really good job of, of sharing the basketball. And that's how you have to attack it if you're the Wolf Pack. Multiple players have to be involved. You've got to score by committee. You've got to put pressure on the defense by keeping it moving. And just to remind everybody, no Diamond Johnson, their leading scorer out again. Nursing a sore right foot, been walking around in the boot. We do not expect her until the NCAA tournament. And there is Diamond. Average, averaging 12 and a half points per game, leading her team also in assists, three point percentage, free throws, th made threes, steals. So that's a lot missing in one little five foot five inch package. Boyd called for her first foul. Fair left open. Just off the back of the rim. Brown Turner turns on the Jets and goes coast to coast. Back up to half a dozen. Woolley thought about it and it thought about it again, didn't shoot it. Fair into the lane, kicking it out. Way off the mark. Hobby able to wrestle away the rebound and then waits for Sanaya Rivers to come. A lot put on Rivers' shoulders with Johnson's injury as far as being a ball handler. Sixth player of the year in the league this season. Hobby somehow found Boyd. That's a great look. The interior passing has been terrific. Yeah. The double team has to come because there's no answer one-on-one -on -one for Hobby or River Baldwin inside. And both of those players making the right 
play, finding their open teammates. Only with some contact. And they're going to call it an arm bar on the defender. In the poise inside, Camille Javi, she gets the double team. She stays strong with the ball. She sees the other defender come over. Jada Boyd makes herself available. This is just a heads up play by Camille Hobby. And Hobby, along with Brown Turner, the only two Wolfpack players to start every game this year. Camille graduated in December of last year, now in the Masters program. She's been a consummate team player. Mentioned how she backed up Elisa Kunain, now pressed into the starter's role. Really enjoying her experience at NC State. Slight delay here. Okay, they have changed the foul from Jada Boyd to Jakia Brown Turner. So that was the delay. Wanted to make sure they got it right. James, terrific steal to get in front of Woolley. And then goes all the way to the basket. Little look away, head fake. James's first points. Biggest lead of the game. Double digits now for the pack. Asia Fair getting it over to the wide open teammate Lewis. Westmore told Angel at halftime he was happy with how they were defending the ball screen. That time Lewis got loose. The recovery wasn't quite quick enough. Nice. Those diagonals, those seams are there against the zone. The timing of making the pass is so important, and NC State has done a really good job of delivering. Well, that was a perfect pass into Brown Turner, the assist to James. JBT now with nine for State. Woolley able to find some room and then missed everything except the cheerleaders. Lazai well, James in transition, able to split the D with the fake pass, get the easy two, and then continuing to move against the zone. Jakia Brown Turner gets in the inside of the bottom of the zone, and Isaiah James finds her. NC State now plus 14 points in the paint in this game. Brown Turner sits down. Madison Hayes coming back in for Westmore. And this is the three time defending tournament champion, NC State Wolfpack. Nice poach by James to grab the offensive board. Pam, I've been impressed with Isaiah James. She's a player who early in the season and even last season ago didn't get a lot of minutes. Has increased her minutes because of necessity with injury and has been ready and taken advantage of it. Initially, a sub on the wing. Diamond Johnson goes down, has to place point guard. Started at point guard when Tanaya Rivers was out as well against Virginia Tech and answered with a career high and is doing a really good job of being a facilitator for this team. Absolutely. Hobby with the bucket. James had 20 points in that game at Virginia Tech when they were down both Rivers and Johnson. A game that the Hokies eventually won. It's just really another example of you got to be ready when your number's called. If you don't get the minutes that you want or that you think you should have, when you do get them, you got to take advantage. And Isaiah James has done that. Mm. NC State up a dozen as we hit a break in Greensboro. In March, we move even faster. The star started day we've got lined up. Push through each round together and we don't. Assistant the NC State's ACC champions. For the third year in a row, ACC champions. That's called a three-peat, Kelly. All right. 
Absolutely, three in a row for the NC State Wolf Pack, including that game winner by Reina Perez last year to win the championship. And Westmore, certainly the domination. Last loss in the semis to Louisville four years ago. And they come in to this tournament as the number eight seed, leading Syracuse 47 to 35. Out of the timeout, nice play by Lewis to bury it for Syracuse. But Syracuse, we talked in the open about Asia Fair, very dynamic scorer. She's only two of 11 from the floor for them. Yeah, she struggled. She's gotten some open looks, hasn't quite gotten them to fall, but the last time these two teams met, she had 14, but she was six of 23 from the floor. Baldwin in the game for the first time since the second quarter, takes steps, one of her few mistakes, hit all five of her shots in the first half. The 10th turnover for NC State, but only the first in this half. They had nine at the half, and that made Westmore a little cranky. Baldwin couldn't come up with it. Bodies crashing to the floor. It's NC State basketball. The Asia Fair right now is on the bench for the Orange, averaging 20 points per game, second only to Tania Latson. In the league this year, Watson unfortunately could not play for Florida State due to an undisclosed injury today. Hello, Sanaya Rivers. Her first points of the second half. Now James in the open court. The scary sight blew right by Woolley. Terrific pass to Hayes. Diamond Johnson loving what she's seeing. They've made nine of their last 10 shots. Michaela Mabry in the middle and Carol Owens on the right, two of the assistants for Notre Dame who are scouting. They will play the winner of this game, but that is not good what we just saw from Olivia Miles. No, it certainly isn't. And you know, you just had hoped, right? That when you, when you saw her go down and you would just hope that Maybe it wasn't as bad as it seems, and certainly we don't have any answers on, on what it is. Um, but judging by the way that she looked walking out of the arena, it doesn't look good. No, and that is uh, certainly unfortunate for the number one seed. They were able to come from behind and beat Louisville on the road without her. Remember, she got hurt with about two and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter against Louisville. Sonia Citron was tremendous the rest of the way. And they likely will be without her for at least the rest of the ACC tournament. There is no official word on Miles, still saying tentative and day-to-day, -day, but this was the injury. Driving and the knee buckled as she went down. The right knee, that's not good. And we were there and she was obviously in distress and upset, came out, had ice on it. Later on, they wrapped the entire leg. Olivia Miles is one of the best players in the country not just in this league and boy it's just it's tough at, at any time but to get injuries this late Neil Ivey doing such a great job coach of the year in the league this year taking them to first and a team that had already lost Dare Mabry earlier in the year to an ACL injury but the resilience of this of, of that group to be able to to put together the second half that they did Sonia Citron, you mentioned, K.K. Bransford was terrific as well and able to come away with an ACC title. Notre Dame has won every time they've come into the ACC tournament as a number one seed. Remember early on when they came over and joined the league, they dominated for the first few years. Nathan McGraw, head coach, five straight championships. Willie. We have two Georges from Australia in this tournament. We absolutely do. We get to see the other one tomorrow. One of my favorite point guards in Georgia Amor. Or Virginia Tech. Rattled home. Boy, Isaiah Jane showing, showing us some stuff, right? Just flashes of just how good she is, how athletic. Six points, four rebounds, four assists. Making the right play, playing under control. No 
and a collision. James running into Wilson. Willie's gonna grab it. He's gonna get Rivers for the reach in, but right now the concern is with Saniah Wilson. Karen McKinney is the trainer for the Orange. My Forsberg telling both teams with the lead officials to go to their benches. Looks like they're going to go over and look at the monitor to see if there was any flagrant contact on that. Well, initially, it looked like Isaiah James and Vincent I. Wilson collided heads. The plays on review for a potential unobserved intentional foul. That was my Forsberg telling us. Let's take a look at it. I mean, that was just both players going for the ball, head for down. And unfortunately and for Saniya Wilson, she got the worst of it. It's a loose ball, both players going after it. So I will anticipate that this will not be ruled an intentional foul. I can't imagine. It's a loose ball, hustle plays. Both players going for it, head down, they collide. After review, the contact is deemed incidental. Play will resume with Syracuse number five, shooting the bonus free throws. Good job by the officials. And that's gotta hurt both players, right? Head on head. But Certainly nothing intentional. Doesn't take, make it hurt any less, but good job by the officials. And it was Isaiah James who knocked heads with Wilson and we saw Zaya over there holding her head as well. Wilson, a sophomore from Rochester, New York, another of the Buffalo players who followed Coach Jack over. Asia Fair's dad among those up and cheering. Fans here at Greensboro Coliseum, some encouragement. Certainly hope that Sanaya is okay. It was very careful, particularly with head injuries now in this day and age. And for now, at least, it looks like they're going to sit her down on the bench and do some evaluation. Meanwhile, there was a foul on Sanaya Rivers, George Woolley heading to the Free throw line to shoot two for the orange. Two shots. James staying in the game appears to be okay. And again, Woolley missed the last game for Syracuse because she was in concussion protocol, but. Looking well today, she's got 14 points. And at 30 to go here in the third quarter. Ball thrown inside, taken away, Woolley lost it. Turnover number 10 for Syracuse.
James, nice pass into Boyd, get it right back to her, open look, couldn't fall. Fair, one on two, a little pull up, and DeAsia gets her ninth point of the game. Just her third field goal in 13 attempts. NC State needs to get a good high percentage look right here. They've dominated on the interior. They need to try to go back. Yeah, they tried to get it into Rivers off her, her hands, or River Baldwin, pardon me, but the last touch to Syracuse player. That looked like one of the easier passes. Baldwin had caught a couple <laughs> of really hard ones in yeah. this ball game. Baldwin, five for five in the first half with 10 points. Has not taken a shot yet here in the third quarter. Hobby playing most of the minutes to start things off after the half. Oh, a little nifty move there by Baldwin. She found herself wide open. Fair. Nope. Shot clock is off now for the pack. And that was one of those situations where if you're Syracuse, you probably want to get a last shot of the quarter. I want to give NC State another chance. James Baldwin trying again. Three seconds now for Syracuse. Try to go the length of the court. They've been outscored by five here in the third quarter. And the NC State Wolfpack up by 11 as we head to the fourth. River Baldwin doing good work. Yes, she had a double team, a triple team, and was able to split them, get the easy two. She stays perfect from the floor. Turn the game off, thinking, oh, it's, you know, 20 point lead, it's probably over. Au contraire. It's March, you should never no, turn the game off. Absolutely not. And now we see Saniya Wilson being helped back to the locker room, knocked heads with. Isaiah James and took the, the worst of it and she is being helped back by the medical staff of Syracuse and another look, James to Collins. Yeah, NC State just doing such a good job of finding those seams in the zone. Syracuse not able to recover. That weak side wing has to drop. NC State shot 73% in the third quarter. They hit 11 shots, seven different players. And 15 assists. You yeah. know, and, and, and that's the thing. It's like when we've seen NC State really struggle on offense, everybody tries to do it on their own. The ball gets stuck. It's not moving. They aren't getting production from multiple players, and they certainly have here today. That time, the, the double on Baldwin resulted in a turnover. Well, finding the seams in the zone is key. And on this defensive shift, right there on the backside, there is no rotation, no drop, and NC State able to capitalize. The Syracuse have a nice comeback in them. Fair into double figures after that. She scored in double figures now in all 30 games for the Orange this season. Baldwin, extra pass. And that time, Bryce was able to get there. She dropped, she was able to get a hand on the ball, get a deflection. Good catch by Woolley to keep it going. And Baldwin coming up. With the rebound, takes a couple of dribbles. And I know it doesn't seem like this, but I mean, Syracuse is still in striking distance. They got to get a couple of stops. Yeah, only an 11 point deficit. They can score in bunches. That's right, get a couple of stops, come down, get some good offensive execution, or get out in transition. And if you're NC State, you can't take your foot off the gas pedal. You've got to continue to execute at a high level. Every possession is important. Baldwin, right back up. She is perfect from the floor. Seven for seven. Bear draws contact out on the perimeter. Hayes picks up her second. 
Tyra Wood comes back in for the orange. Strong takes a seat. Well, fair. Into double figures with her last bucket. River Baldwin has not missed a shot coming off the bench. And really the paint points piling up for State. In and out for Woolley. Turned, fired. That wasn't a good shot. River Baldwin was diving down the lane. She was wide open. Even if you don't pass it, get the ball moving. Elena Rice with a full head of steam got fouled on her way to the bucket. Brown Turner just picked up her third foul. Only the second team foul. There, guarded out there by Hayes. Woolley driving, one-handed. Baldwin ripped it away, and they're going to call the foul on Woolley. Another foul on Woolley. Two quick ones on the Aussie. Baldwin doubled. Dribble out of trouble. Shot clock at five. They need a shot from Hayes, big time. Just when you think Syracuse can close the gap and maybe get over the hump, the Wolfpack come back with an answer. And it's been multiple players, and I think that's what's been so impressive about the effort today for NC State. Shot clock winded down, Jakia Brown-Turner finds Maddie Hayes, knocks down the three from the corner. Tania Rivers is loving it, the bench is loving it. Hayes just picked up her third foul on the other end. Largest lead of the game right now for Syracuse. Baldwin might have gotten a finger on that shot. Fair. Trying to create something on her own. Baldwin having herself a ball game. It's her seventh rebound to go along with 14 points and the Wolfpack faithful. Starting to think they're gonna get a shot at Notre Dame tomorrow. JPT, timeout, Syracuse. The palindromic score, 64-46, Pack in control. It's over 71%, they are plus 12 in points, River Baldwin Practically perfect in every way, certainly perfect in shooting. Seven for seven, 14.7 boards. And the paint points are very one-sided. Yeah, 44 to 22 advantage, NC State. The other thing that's been impressive, and Pam, we've seen this NC State team a lot this season, is just the way they're sharing the basketball. Yeah, it's a very impressive. Lewis ties up Javi from Warren State. Let's go over to Angel Gray. Even though the Wolfpack are down Diamond Johnson, there has to be a clear advantage because of ex ex experience, but we will get more into that as soon as we come back from break. Right now, Wolfpack with a 10-point advantage. I'm a screen-addicted tween, and if I'm not posting on social media, I don't feel seen. Hey, Mom, look. Mom? Oh, my God, Mom, you got to look at this. Nope. Keeping my eyes on the road is paying off with DriveWise. Post about that. Boring. Oh, say cheese. No, thank you. Unblock me. Stop. <laughs> that was awesome. Hey, what's your ad? I'll tag you. Get drive wires from Mall State. Save 40% for avoiding mayhem like me.
Wolfpack have a healthy lead, 64 to 46 over Syracuse. And just talking about their experience in this tournament, Camille Hobby, Jada Boyd, and Jakia Brown Turner are a part of that 9-0 ACC tournament record in the four seasons that they've been with this team. But also, seven of the Pac-9 players have appeared in at least one ACC tournament game in their career. So understanding not only how to win, but what it takes to win a title together in this time in March. Yeah, they have had nothing but success here. Hobby with the score for State on that trip. And then a foul underneath. Lewis got into the paint. Well, this is an NC State team that finally won the regular season last year after a drought that had gone back to 1990, which is remarkable. It took that long to get the regular season title, but three straight titles in the ACC tournament. A reminder to fans to download the ACC three-point challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit local boys and girls clubs. Score points for your school after the tournament. Local boys and girls clubs receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC team's final ranking. Last foul was on Camille Hobby for State. Woolley hounded by Rivers out on the perimeter. Hyman gave it to Lewis. He was able to wriggle her way in for a basket. Now whistle on the other end of the floor. State less than five minutes away from a rematch with Notre Dame, a team that they beat during the regular season. And you talked about it, Steph. Paint has belonged, but the lack thereof, there's it's kind of empty here. It's a very beautiful court. Hobby with two more paint points. Well, NC State's just had the clear advantage inside. They have the advantage with. Camille Hobby and with River Baldwin on the interior just from a sheer size and physicality standpoint. But then being able to find the open teams in the zone, make the high to low, the short corner to post dive passes, and find easy buckets. River Baldwin taking a break on the bench. Baldwin and Hobby a combined 13 for 17 from the floor for 26 points. Baldwin has not missed a shot. All seven have gone in, as you see. We knew they would have the advantage in the paint, but this is a huge one. They have doubled them up, 48 to 24 in paint points. Almost as many paint points as Syracuse has point points. Syracuse foul number 24, Darian Lewis, her third, fifth orange team. Lewis just picked up her third personal foul. And that sends Camille Hobby to the free throw line. Perfect trip for Javi. She joins the party now. Four NC State players in double figures. Lewis with the miss. Collins and Rice were kind of jostling each other before the shot even went up. And now Rice hits the deck. And Collins is called for her first foul. First, Fifth team foul, so Syracuse in the bonus the rest of the quarter. Just under four minutes left to go. Mind you, there are still two more games yet to come tonight. At six Eastern, North Carolina Clemson, and then Miami Boston College. We're wrapping up this second round. Rice delivered at the line.
Rivers, that's a low percentage pass, trying to get it into Collins, taken away, three ball. Just a little bit too strong. Collins able to get it. And I think they should just well, take, it, more, take it easy. Less <laughs> more getting on tonight, Rivers. Like, there's no reason to take a chance right, right here. Right. You don't have to make a home run play. Work the clock. Continue to do what got you to this point. Share the basketball, move the basketball, get some ball reversals, and then get the ball inside. And then they get Hyman for the hand check. That is the first one on her. So Sanaya Rivers heads to the free throw line to shoot two. Both teams in the bonus. The 70th annual New York Life men's ACC tournament begins Tuesday afternoon right here in this building. We'll have all three first round games for you with two, 4.30 and 7 Eastern respectively on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. There are a lot of trucks out there in the compound, a lot of production trucks. They're gonna be busy next week. They are, sure are. We're busy here with this women's tournament that runs through Sunday. All the conference tournaments throughout the country. Exciting times right now in women's basketball, the parody. And we will be heading to the Big Ten to do their championship on Sunday. Can't wait for that. Absolutely. That's, a, that's another league, like the ACC this year, that has just been fantastic. It sure is. The depth, the parity, the scoring. A little, wouldn't mind a little dose of Caitlin Clark <laughs> on Sunday. Take a look at our Bojangles Big Bow moment of tonight's game. And it's River Baldwin. Well, she was terrific. I mean, she was perfect from the floor and came in, made an immediate impact in the ball game, made the right play, not just scoring around the rim, but when she was doubled, making the extra pass, getting the ball moving. Five for five in the first half, two for two here in the second for River. And Let's update that. That's that's good work. Yeah, it sure is. 48 points in the paint to 51 total points for Syracuse. NC State really has dominated the interior. River Baldwin and Camille Hobby doing most of the work for them. Inside of the post game, Hyman with the three. Syracuse takes the timeout. Hyman, the third, check that fourth Syracuse player now into double figures. So earlier today, we had one of the most bizarre games I've seen. Wake Forest was down 20 early in the fourth quarter, and then Jewel Spear and the rest of her teammates went on a 26-0 run. Never looked back. Upset Florida State, and they get Louisville tomorrow. Jules Spear was over in the first half, and she even talked to Angel about getting in her head a little bit, but boy, she came out of it in the second half. A very exciting team. Megan Jebbia, the first-year head coach, came over from American University, and Wake Forest, four straight years, they've won one game in the ACC tournament that they have advanced, and now they've won a couple. Always a challenge, playing their third game in three days, but they will get Louisville, team they beat in the regular season. So this tournament, so unpredictable, but then you mentioned this earlier, we had the, you know, called quite a few NC State games. This is the best I've seen them as far as, you know, the ball movement. It is, since we had them earlier in the year at Iowa where they played yes, outstanding. Yes, that was their and, best. Yes, and, and, and beat Iowa on the road, but they had been up and down and inconsistent throughout ACC play. And, you know, certainly this is one of the, the best efforts. Doing this all without Diamond Johnson, who has been shut down for the ACC tournament, trying to get that right foot healed. She's got it over there in a boot. It's always tough when, when you have an injury like that. Diamond Johnson missed a few games, came back, tried to play on it. 
maybe came back, you know, a little bit too early, but you're a competitor. You want to play, right. and then and then you just can't quite work through it. It's something that, you know, is likely not going to be healed until you get time to rest after the season, but Westmore deciding to shut her down. We want to try to make sure that she's available for the NCAA tournament. Real hobby. Bobby with 16, Baldwin with 14. That's 30 points from the two post players for Coach Moore. And now that is a season high in paint points for NC State, 52. at the line and now Syracuse just has sit and hope that they stay on the correct side of the bubble in their case Charlie Cream has them as one of the final teams in to the NCAA tournament they would be the ninth ACC team in according to Charlie is when you hope that there's not a lot of upsets in the so-called one bid leagues, right? Yes. That the regular season champs can close NCAA out the tournament. A terrific job in the first season at Syracuse, a total overhaul of the personnel, the program itself. Rivers just picked up her third foul. There are the last four in, and you see Syracuse right there at the bottom. In Oregon, here's a team that lost seven straight games during the season. And they are well, and you, almost in. They are, the first four out. So if, if Oregon makes a run in the Pac-12 tournament, what does that do to Syracuse? You know, not just the, the one big leagues and, and having a upset champion, but you know, you think about Oregon yes. being able to make a run. Right now, Syracuse should be the biggest Stanford fans in the world because that's who Oregon will play next. Stanford showing that they've been human with some Pac-12 losses this season. It's just outside of, of what Don Staley and South Carolina have been able to do. And they even had a few scares. I mean, Ole Miss, you'll yeah. let McEwen squad. Yeah, they had to go to overtime, Had to right? go to overtime. And you know, teams that have, that have played them tight, but they have been the most dominant team all season long. Certainly the favorite, no question about it, but after that, it's been up for grabs. Indiana and what Terry Moran has done, consistency, but Caitlin Clark had a dagger for them in that last game of the regular season. Of course she did. That crazy three-pointer. Oregon, by the way, playing Stanford and Vegas in a Pac-12 quarterfinal. That game starts at about an hour and a half. Big implications for Syracuse and all the other teams on the bubble. So with the minute left to go in this game, the, the Wolfpackers happy for what they've seen and they will get a shot at Notre Dame, a team that they beat in late January right after Dara Mabry went out. And from the looks of it, it doesn't look like Olivia Miles will be able to play. But a really good team effort. <laughs> JBT for three, she's got 16. I think from the beginning of the ball game, NC State has done a really good job of sharing the basketball. Multiple players contributing, dominating on the interior, and really the most complete effort we've seen from this ball club, much of ACC play. Yeah, so I would say, as, as you mentioned, since Iowa, when they had that big win on the road the first of December, very encouraging. No Diamond Johnson, but a lot of help. Camille Hobby with 16, River Baldwin with 14, JBT also with 16 to lead the way. Syracuse with the loss. They fall to 18 and 12 on the season. Hyman had 15.